So, yeah, so I worked for Roger Penske. Uh, we had a three-car team. We won 12 out of 15 races that year. We ran for the Marlboro cars. Everybody probably remembers the Marlboro cars. Um, we won the championship. We won the Indy 500. When we got to that point where we, that picture that I told you to try to be over there for was when we won the championship for 94. And that picture was taken across all of us on the wall. And it was just a cool shot that you just never forget. It's just, it's just magic. This group of guys is just tremendous to work with. Everybody just seems to get along. Yeah, you always got your little issue here and there, but for the most part, everybody likes to have fun and get their job done. And it's good. And a lot of race teams are like that. You gotta have a good time where all, everybody's away from home a lot of times for a long time. So you gotta just keep it good. And I'm one of the lucky guys because I get to, you'll see her later, but my wife, she travels with me now, so. Road America from my first year racing in the United States was 2002 and it was just a place that I've absolutely loved as a, as a racetrack. Um, it's got a lot of good elements to it that we miss in modern day tracks. It has a lot of danger, a lot of balls corners on it. So for me, um, I love coming back here. I, I typically do quite a lot of trips here. I coach a lot here as well. I think anybody will tell you that for racetrack food, and facilities, this is one of the best. The funnel fries and the cheese curds are really good. Testing is really important in general and uh, to try and test as close to the race weekend as possible. We found some issues on the car that we've been struggling with in a couple of races. Um, you know, and it was uh, something we couldn't find at the racetrack on a regular weekend because we just don't have enough time to really dive into the deep stuff. Um, but we made a point in the test on day one, we brought the spare car. Uh, we ran both cars back to back. There was one noticeable faster than the other. Uh, and so we kind of stopped the test at that point by midday and we kind of started diving into things. Uh, we found the big problem overnight and uh, put both cars identical to the next day and all of a sudden, you know, we, we created magic again. Well, they just wanted to have more you know, seat time, so we just, we just ran a lot of laps while we tested with the other car with Ryan and then they'd switch out and then he'd feel that car too and see if he liked it and everything was just smooth. I don't think we had one real hiccup the whole test session that we were there. It was really pretty good. Sam, are these kind of nights normal for testing? <laughs> Depends on what you're testing really. If you're going to do a test just to like get drivers and track time, that pretty much just like wipe the car off, check it over. And One like this, you have a couple days to really get into a lot of stuff that, yeah. A big part of racing is finding problems that don't always seem very obvious. And you're taking one guy's word from it, which is usually mine. It's always nice to come back to places that you've done well at or won. Um, you know, when you look at our package from last year to this year, we're on a very similar tire, we're in the same car. Uh, so at least you know that a lot of the stuff you come back with should work and carry over. Yeah, for us having both cars at the test is invaluable because we can go two different directions with setup and then see which works and then come back. And that basically takes us half the time as it would with one car. And then not only that, while well, we can do setup and development work with you know Ryan in the car, it also gives us a car that Dwight can go around and just get seat time and laps and keep working on his technique and improving what he's doing as well. So it's, uh, it's invaluable having two cars at the test for us. Don't push the ones that say don't push. So don't push any of them. Pretty much. None of them will work right now. Is this anyone's first time to a race event? Oh, a couple new ones. You guys, you're... <laughs> 
So we have qualifying today at uh, 11.50, I think is our qualifying. I think we're the third class on. Uh, we had two practice sessions yesterday. We are the reigning uh, champs from last year. Woo! Uh, we were P1 in both sessions yesterday. So, so far so good. Uh, power plant is a four liter V8. Uh, it's built by an England company called Gibson. It starts as a Nissan V8 power plant, but it's a really good proper best sounding car out there power plant is a race built motor six speed sequential gearbox paddle shifts on the wheels um, me and all the fans fun. it's great to have so much interaction especially imsa do a good job also with the autograph sessions etc um it's just uh it's it's just cool to meet people and talk race cars i'll i'll happily talk race cars rally cars vintage cars with anybody people i've had people come up to me and like hey can you sign this and i'm like where have you got that? Like, and it would be a picture of me, or, you know, Ryan's had it as well. I've seen pictures come up, people come up with pictures of Ryan from like back when I first knew of him. Oh, look crap. at that. <laughs> that was a good delivery. Yeah, that was cool. That was the first year, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. First I liked year. last year a lot. Like, where have you got that? And like, why have you only now just brought it to us? Um, and same with like memorabilia, like, people would come up to me with like bits of cars that I've broken over the years, like, hey, can you sign this? And I'm like, no way, that's whatever it is. So that, that's really cool. And it, as I said, the fan interaction is a big part of it. I still remember being like that little kid at the races where a professional driver or an amateur driver, when you're 10 years old, you don't know the difference. All you know is they're racing that really cool car. And so you kind of like put them up on a pedestal for a little bit. So it's really fun to meet like the little kids and just interact with fans on a race weekend. It's, uh, it's a good time. And as I said, I'll happily talk race cars with anyone. If we knew it was gonna be dry tomorrow, we could run stickers straight out of the pits. You burn the rears as soon as you leave the box. You'll see everybody lights up the rears as most as they can, because you're trying to scrub the rears in, at least on the outlap. Um, and then with the fast corners here, the fronts come in really pretty quick. Qualifying was excellent. Um, clearly the car is very good. Dwight was really good here last year. And if you look at his Delta to the fastest car, um, which is usually the 11 or the 52 car, um, that's the closest he's ever been, four tenths from pole. Um, so that tells you that we're getting better. It tells you the car's strong. Um, again, one of the reasons why I don't want it to rain when we clearly have a very good package right now to race. Tomorrow, I mean, we've done everything right to this point in the weekend. You know, we can't control a lot of things, weather being one of them, but the plan is the win. Any driver that tells you that they don't mind racing in the rain, I don't believe that. I think that's like a mental thing where people want to make sure they feel confident and come across confident. Um, I don't mind racing in the rain, but it definitely adds a number of elements out of your control. Um, I mean, I don't think people realize you can be driving completely in a straight line and before you know it, you're doing a 360 through the grass through nothing you did wrong. Um, and with the P2 car, we have a fairly flat bottom car. We run a couple inches off the ground and it doesn't take much for that car to uh, become a sailboat.
one lap to the next, a little change in rain or a little bit change in wind, uh, a drain starts to overflow on the track and all of a sudden, what was fine the lap before now becomes a river. It's all about feel. Like what's the car doing underneath you, feeling what the road's doing. And it can be different if it's drying or as it's getting more and more wet, the track's different lap after lap after lap. So you, it puts even more emphasis on that, you know, feeling what the car's doing underneath you through the steering wheels, through the pedals, and just uh, a little bit of blind faith. Road America is extremely famous for the carousel and the kink. Uh, and a, a carousel and the kink and a P2 car are definitely no joke. We just pulled six gears, so we're probably about 160 ish, 150, 160. specifically remember that morning you would like come up to me and it, it must have been a joke but you had said the words when we win today I need you to be over there across the straight across the wall and uh, Ryan came flying through and he was in second place second place second place and all of a sudden he's in first and then a yellow flag came out and I was like oh shit it's ours gonna win. And I had to sprint all the way from turn one to parallel to you guys and get the shot He knew. Well, you know how I knew? Because between Dwight's driving that day and Ryan's driving that day, it was just, it was just, it was going to happen. The whole weekend, it was just going to happen because it was just that weekend. Looks as follows, coming up on the top step of the podium, back-to-back -back Road America victories. Give it up for the Aero Motorsport car number 18 drivers, Ryan Dial and Dwight Merriman. When the team wins, it's the same for me. Like whether I'm there as a driver or whether I'm there just as a team owner, for me, that sense of achievement is the same. Undoubtedly, like the sense of pride that you get when we won at Road America, was, uh, it's no different than if you're a driver. It's still, for want of a better description, it's still my baby that, uh, that won. So it's, yeah, great sense of pride, great sense of achievement, and you know, just couldn't be happier for Dwight and Ryan and the boys. They all work so hard that uh, they really, you know, every team manager or team owner will say this, but they all work so hard they deserve to win every race. Wait, no, I want to introduce my wife. Come on, come over. No, 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 this is about the team. Okay, so I'm gonna to to get up and turn the camera if you don't come over. We'll put it in the behind. It's the just your thing. face. Oh, you just with my face. Okay, I don't need to talk. So now you know. So this is our hospitality girl. It's my wife of two years. Wait, that's too long. Two. And she does a great job with the food. Tell them. Except for this week, she was short. In, she was short in the chicken in a wine sauce. She was short. And what is, what is hospitality? Food. What is food? Fuel. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs>